Okay, this is an informal testimony meeting here tonight. Before we get started, I'd like to read from the church manual, the section entitled Testimonials. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Testimony in regard to the healing of the sick is highly important. More than a mere rehearsal of blessings, it scales the pinnacle of praise and illustrates the demonstration of Christ who healeth all thy diseases. This testimony, however, shall not include a description of symptoms or of suffering, though the generic name of the disease may be indicated. For those that give testimonies tonight, I'd like to remind you again to please keep your remarks within four minutes so that everyone will have a chance to offer their contribution tonight. And for those that are on the teleconference, when you're ready to give a testimony, please press star one. That lets us know that you're ready. And when we're ready here, we will call on you. And now I would like to open the meeting to the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. I'm grateful tonight for this past Sunday's roundtable on handling malicious animal magnetism. That evening I began to have thoughts of uselessness that intensified as the night went on. I kept working with what we had gone over in class. And then I remembered how my practitioner said that if I come into a Wednesday feeling like I won't give a testimony, that others would feel that too. So I began to pray that everyone else in the church knew that they weren't useless and indeed had a place here. About three minutes of that, and I felt my joy come back. How wonderful it is that what we learn here is not fancy words and rhetoric, but actual truth that can be used to make all our lives better. It is times like this in which I know I and all of us are in the right place. I'm so grateful to God for Mary Baker Eddy, the early workers, my practitioner, and everyone involved for providing the science and the place for us to learn and understand. Thank you. And also, I'll read a letter of gratitude that came in, this, came in today. I'm grateful for the Plainfield practitioners. There is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. A few months back, I called a Plainfield practitioner requesting prayerful help in finding place as manifested in employment and supply. However, I neglected to mention to the practitioner that I had not been applying to jobs because I had been arrested last year and did not want to report an arrest on job applications. So no work came. Then my trial date came up last month, and I called the practitioner again for help to see divine guidance the, bring the right outcome in court as the district attorney was seeking six months in the county jail and a felony conviction for me as the reduced charge plea bargain. When the Plainfield practitioner called, she, in a loving way, gave a stern but loving rebuke as to why I did not disclose to her that I had called early about earlier. Called earlier about employment, sorry. I was asked to study Mrs. Eddy's article, Pond and Purpose, which was very enlightening. Last week when I went to court, it was a special court for veterans, I was given a better plea bargain with my pleading no contest to a minor misdemeanor charge and sentenced to a year's probation with no jail time. And at that time my probation ends, my arrest record will be expunged. Meanwhile, the probation officer will be working with me on employment applications to overcome the arrest record employment barrier. In the process, I had to literally go on my knees and confess to God my wrongdoings and be sorry for my sins. This humility brought forth my healing. I had worked previously with a Boston-affiliated practitioner and Boston teacher with little to no effect, but the Plainfield practitioner was effective in healing my arrogance, self-centeredness, and lack of humility. The fruits of this healing are now leading to a path to 
an expunged arrest record, and professional help with employment. I am truly grateful. And thank you to both of you. Linda. Linda from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Yes, good evening. Um, uh, I think I have an, do you still hear an echo? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. No, it sounds like it's echoing. I hope it's not echoing there. Okay, I'm, I would like to express my deep gratitude for the last two roundtable sessions with these in-depth lessons using the first part of the questions and answers in miscellaneous writing by Mary Baker Eddy. It cleared up years of misconceptions regarding the terms mental malpractice and animal magnetism. For so long, these concepts seemed mysterious and clouded by superstitious fear and a foggy sense on how to pray about it. Now I have a clearer sense of how to be more watchful. I am purifying my prayer, and I understand e greater urgency of living and understanding the spiritual and biblical principles. So much makes sense to me now. Uh, I remember finding in one of the miscellany writings where it says the victim is led to believe and do what he would never otherwise think and do voluntarily. Um, I also want to express my appreciation for the two watches, this one last week and one this week on the carousel that just seemed so perfect in addressing this topic also. Um, they were by uh, the carpenters. Uh, the difference I feel with the teachings here at Plainfield and the truth shared have begun a great change in me, unlike any other time in my life. As they say, by their fruits ye shall know them. I am very grateful to have found this place with structured and, um, lessons and committed people to God. I'm very grateful to, for my Plainfield practitioner and all the beautiful people involved with this church. Um, I cannot ever express enough gratitude. Um, thank you so much and have a, a lovely evening. Thank you. Day Day. Day Day from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. Today as I was driving home from work, I was thinking about my testimony for tonight. And after a few minutes, my car seemed to be slowing down shortly before I realized that my engine light was on. I've been needing to get some work done on my car for a while now, and I delayed my efforts to do so after dealing with a number of dishonest mechanics within a short period of time. Knowing that some work was definitely necessary, I decided to begin the process again this coming weekend. But due to a work obligation that I have to fulfill tomorrow morning, I thought it was to see if something could be done this afternoon. So at first I was feeling a bit uneasy. I continued to pray, knowing that God would lead me to the right place as I held to the thought that man is honest. As a result, I ended up at one of several auto shops near my home only five minutes away. The representatives were calm and considerate, and after getting an oil change, I was informed of a few minor problems that I had prior knowledge of, and the mechanic let me know that it was okay for me to drive the car for the next few days. He humbly suggested that I bring my car in on Friday for a follow-up inspection, and that after inspecting, he will let me know what, pr what repairs are a priority and which ones and wait till later. The gentleman listened carefully to my concerns and took the time to offer, offer thorough explanations, although there were people waiting in line. This was a completely different experience from the ones I'd had with so many other auto shops, and I knew that it was partially due to my change in approach. While in the shop's lobby, I noticed that Psalm 23 was framed on the wall. In the waiting room, there was a framed picture of John 15, 5, which states, in short, For without me ye can do nothing. And on the two end tables, there were two Bibles next to a stack of magazines. This was something that I had never seen before, and it confirmed for me that there was something 
significantly different about the experience. I am so grateful that my challenge this afternoon was an opportunity to realize God's care even more. I know that I can do nothing without him, and I'm so glad that my determination to share my experience tonight never wavered due to any unnecessary discouragement. Thank you so much for tonight's meeting and for the inspired reading. Thank you. Laverne. Laverne from Maryland, go ahead. Hello. Shortly after becoming a member of this church, a co-worker confided in me that he had a life-threatening disease and that he had a short time to live. And I was, he was very, very sad. And I, while he was talking, I was praying for what the right words to say. I began talking to him about God, and I shared with him what I was learning here as best as I could. I told him that God was his life. He said that it was too late for him because he was dying. And I told him that he's living, therefore he can't be dying. And I saw a little spark in his eye. I remember sharing the story at a roundtable discussion two years ago. Well, my coworker retired, and I didn't hear from him anymore until this past Saturday. He showed up at a conference I had to attend. And I said to him, I said, you look great. And he said, I feel great. He said, when you told me that I was living and therefore could not be dying, I wanted to believe you. He said he started reading everything he could find on Christian science. And he said he started living. Before I could say anything else, another coworker asked him, well, what are the doctors saying? And he said, I don't know. I haven't been back. And before she could say anything else, I interrupted, good for you. And then I gave him a big hug and gave him the address to our website. And then the conference started. So I walked away thanking God and recalling the scripture, except you be converted and become as a little child, you will never not enter the kingdom of heaven. I continue to be so grateful to God for Mrs. Eddy and Christian Science, for this church, for practitioner support, and for God's love for us all. And hopefully he will come to the website and start learning and eventually understanding real Christian science. And thanks for those inspiring readings and uplifting testimonies. Thank you. Sana. Sana from Illinois. Go ahead. Well, I'll just start by saying, wow, <laughs> that was beautiful to hear. And I would like to express my gratitude for your wonderful Bible studies. Um, a while back, the area we live in was hit with a major snowstorm. My husband and I run a small preschool. And that evening, we received an alert from the monitoring device we have set up there that there was a power outage. We were both quite alarmed by this, as last year this time, we had a terrible situation with pipes freezing there during our winter break, which is why we installed the monitoring device. And we knew the temperatures were expected to drop very low that night. The distance was too far for us to travel in these conditions, and we couldn't find anyone available to do so. Well, after much frantic activity, which amounted to nothing, we got very quiet and thought about all the wonderful things we'd been learning through your Bible studies, how these Bible characters relied on God with complete trust, not fearing, and were so blessed. We also thought about the things we were grateful for, it immediately brought us a sense of peace. For the next hour or so, I felt like a huge burden had been lifted. During that time, my husband was able to contact someone who'd been unavailable earlier to stop at the school and check on it. And I felt led to call back the utility company that we had reported the outage to earlier. And to my surprise, they said they had been to our school and assured us that we had full power. In our earlier conversation with them, they'd given no indication when or even if someone would be able to make it out there in this storm. I discovered they had come an hour earlier, right about the time our thought had shifted to putting our trust in God. 
We are so very grateful to God and to Mary Baker Eddy for giving us this wonderful science and its practical application to all our daily needs. And thank you to Plainfield for the great things you are doing. Thank you. Shardell. Shardell from Pennsylvania. Go ahead. Oh, good evening. Uh, this, that last Saturday, um, after the Bible study that barely led, I uh, was thinking a lot about Cornelius and Peter and their love and respect for God and the wonderful Bible study. That evening when I returned home, it was dark and the back light was not on. I wanted to fix it before others started to return home, so I had to use pliers to unscrew the little centimeter-long screw cover, and one dropped into a puddle right below. While I was fishing around for it with my fingers, I knew that there was a solution. Right away, the Bible story of the floating axe came to mind, and immediately my fingers touched the tiny cap. After finishing up, I went right in, and looked up the story of Elisha by the Jordan River when one of his disciples dropped an axe into the water and called, Master, the axe is borrowed. Elisha broke off a piece of wood, and the axe rose to the surface. I was very happy. Bible story. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I read a statement the other day that meant a lot to me. It said, the true courage that is based upon knowing is like a kite. Every contrary wind sends it higher. And it made me think of the classes that we have here, the knowing, all, all that we're learning about God and about how to use Christian science. Um, that's, that's the true courage. We know the truth and we are we are standing on that truth. So any wind that comes along will just bring us higher. And I just thought that was such a wonderful statement and, and a wonderful analogy to, to our classes. They are so good and they are so filled with wonderful truths that we can use every day. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to express gratitude for a healing my mother had. Uh, one evening around 11 o'clock, she called me and asked me to come over. She was on the floor and could not move. And um, I said, I'd be right over. She said, I'm going to call practitioner. Well, she called practitioner and was met with a lot of love. And when I got there about three minutes later, there was my mother getting off the floor, already healed. So I helped her into bed, and we talked a few minutes, and I was able to call the practitioner and tell her that she was healed. I am just so grateful that practitioner expresses so much love and is always available in every emergency and for this quick healing. It's wonderful to have Christian science in our lives and to be able to turn to God for our every need. I am just so grateful for this church, for the practitioner, and for all the good God has given us. Thank you. Thank you. you nowhere else in my life have I found joy and satisfaction. I found in this church, and it found something worth, worth doing, not just dreaming about. And I don't quite know yet what it is, but uh, I used to feel like, uh, eh, I don't need this and I don't need that. But it tells us in Proverbs that God gives you so much. And I realized you should take it. That's accepting his love. And I'm sure I'm just limiting myself by, by just closing the door, thinking oh, I don't need this, I don't need that, or just, just let me get by. And it says in this week in the lesson, it's so good, Proverbs 7, 8, 17 to 21. Ah, riches and honors are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. 
and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I don't want God to be offended when he's not taking what he's given. He gladly gives it, and I'm sure it's for some good purpose, so that uh, it can be given and used for the betterment of others. And so I, I shouldn't close the door in my mind saying, oh, I don't need this and I don't need that, but to, to find out what God wants, wants to, how he wants to use me. Uh, it's a that's progress for me, and I think it's church because uh, it makes you think deeply, and, and yes, purify yourself, correct yourself, so you can be more like you made. Thank you. Thank you. Betty from California. Betty from California, go ahead. I am grateful tonight for the help I received from a Plainfield practitioner. A couple of weeks ago, I called a Plainfield practitioner to get help for a meeting I was putting together. <clears throat> the practitioner said, to give of your Christ, and the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and also that I was uh, feeding his sheep, and God will give me everything I need. Um, well, after getting off the phone, I saw that I really needed to put more love into the meeting. It was all about love and not about the agenda or the meal or anything else. Uh, well, I worked with this, and um, everything was done by Friday before the Saturday meeting. It was done by Friday night, uh, and I was able to attend the Bible study that morning before I left for the meeting. Um, needless to say, the meeting went very well. At the meeting, I had help with uh, the registration part of the meeting where people came in and signed and all that stuff. Um, the meeting ran very well, and I even got a volunteer to help me uh, for the next year with meetings. And also, it, we were expecting rain, and a lot of people had traveled a long distance to get to the meeting. And it didn't rain until later on that Saturday evening. Uh, and I was so grateful for that. Um, I'm very grateful for Christian Science and the Plainfield Church. And thank you for the reading tonight. Thank you. Connie. Connie from Texas, go ahead. Thank you. I remember the healing whenever I uh, read the watch yesterday that I had many years ago, and I wanted to share it. Uh, for many years before I came into Christian science, every spring I would fall into a really black depression. I had no idea why, and I, I never went to anybody to find out. I just stayed with it. But whenever I found Christian science, uh, a practitioner told me that's not your thinking. It's that everybody in the world thinks that Jesus was tortured and killed. And we know that's not so. He, he, he was working out his salvation. He was alive. And at that moment, that depression disappeared. It never returned again. And uh, I also want to express gratitude for our roundtables. They are just amazing. I, I've always liked reading miscellaneous writings, and I've gotten a lot out of it. But to find out that you can cover two paragraphs in one hour and actually could have gone over an hour, it's just amazing. It's, it's just wonderful. So I want to thank our teacher and... Uh, I'm so grateful for Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy for everything they've given to us. And so grateful for the wonderful testimonies tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Tom from New York. Tom from New York. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, it was quite some time ago, and, and you know, the church, uh, we were in the church to uh, you know, read our lesson um, you know, first thing in the morning. And generally, I'd get a cup of coffee and, and um, drink that before I started my lesson because I wanted to be awake for it. But I um, kind of found that it was counterproductive because then I just started thinking about all sorts of things during the day. Um, and so I thought, oh, well, let me rethink this. So then I started reading the lesson um, um, first thing, um, even if I was half awake. Uh, and actually, uh, uh, things seemed to go a lot smoother um, when I started doing that. Um, so then... The, re 
reason I mention this because last week I was um, got up and I started reading my lesson, and um, I, you know I looked at it, and uh, I all of a sudden was became totally disinterested in it, and, and then when I looked at the words, it didn't mean anything to me, and, and I thought, okay, what are you going to do about this? Um, so I'm not going to go run, make up coffee, and wake myself up. I just sat there in the chair for a few minutes and, and thought this through. Um, and uh, just realized it was just, uh, just a lie keeping me from reading the lesson. And so then I went back to reading the lesson. And um, just like usual, it was just fine. So um, I only mention this because it was a momentary thing. But, you know, I wouldn't let go of it uh, until I worked through that. And um, so I'm grateful for the lessons I've heard. I learned from this church. Thank you. Thank you. The Moore is from Georgia. Go ahead. Um, I do want to express my gratitude tonight. Um, for many things that I've learned in this church, but in particular, um, I, I was thinking back to this last weekend, and um, something that happened uh, demonstrated some growth that I have experienced over the last few years. When I first came to this church, one of the things that we were taught was that, you know, when a challenge comes, it's we need to see it as rather than uh, you know like something personal or you know like a personal problem, but it, Instead, it's an attack on our Christ consciousness, an aggressive mental suggestion. And it was hard not to see it as personal at first. For instance, I used to struggle with, you know, bouts of depression, and those always felt very personal, and not necessarily as an attack on my Christ, but just like as something that seems so fundamentally a part of me. So it wasn't always easy at first, but it's been something I've worked on over the years and have made a lot of progress with it. This past weekend, uh, my, I was away at a company retreat for the weekend with all of my coworkers, and the trip started out well and started out very harmonious. But by midday Saturday, I suddenly started to feel more and more kind of under attack. Like I just felt this sense of suddenly like I didn't belong and that you know I just didn't fit in with my coworkers and I wasn't uh, somehow I just felt very separate and very alone. And it was startling. It was so odd to me because I had always felt a, a good, strong sense of camaraderie at work and in the sense of belonging. Um, it was very, very ailing and very, very surprising. But I pressed on because, as we're taught here, that we work to radiate and not absorb, and to hold on to the simple truths, um, just you know, whatever inspiration that God sends to us. And you know, so I prayed about what to do that night, and I didn't go to one of the activities that we went, a lot of people were going to go to. Instead, I hung back and talked with a coworker and had a lovely conversation with her um, and continued working through the night after that, too, just with the lesson and just holding on to some, you know, to the thought that God loved me and I couldn't be separate from that love. And the next morning on the ride to the airport, the whole thing just lifted. It was just like some, it's like, pulling away a Band-Aid or something, just lifted right off of me, just like it never was there, which it wasn't. And I, looking back, you know, I'm really grateful for the experience because it's, it never felt like me, and I realized that I wasn't identifying with it. I wasn't seeing it as, like, my bout of depression or, you know, something that was suddenly this personal thing on me, but it truly was this outside attack trying to get in, and, you know, with you know, with my work and with my persistence, it you know it gave up and it left. So I was I was really grateful for that uh, and, and for looking back. And also, as I look back on it too, I realized one of the things that I should have handled and didn't at the time was the idea of spring break. You know, this church is great about teaching us to handle things like Lent and the holiday season. And Saturday was actually the start of spring break. And, and the thought came to me: it's like, aha! I should have also worked on. Um, that kind of mental influx of everybody just, you know, going nuts and mentally checking out. So, um, you know, looking back over the weekend, I, I was very grateful for the growth and also for the recognition of, you know, how I've come in not identifying with these things when they come knocking at my door. So, again, just 
so grateful for all the testimonies tonight. They're, they're so lovely. Um, it's so good to hear from everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. This church has a dear friend from Argentina, and her name is Teresa. Teresa has been translating our weekly lesson sermons into Spanish, as well as recording an audio file, sending them to us, and we feature it on our website. And she's been doing that faithfully for a long time. Teresa's family recently had a wonderful healing, and she sent it in, and I'd like to read it. But before I do, I'd also like to give thanks to another dear friend of this church, Carla from New York, who was so helpful in translating it into English for us. This is Teresa's testimony. The past two weeks I've been working a lot because my husband's sister was admitted to the hospital in a coma, unconscious, with a septic shock called infectious, and with an organic paralysis which would make it almost impossible for her to recover. Upon hearing this, her two daughters came from Chicago to Buenos Aires to say goodbye to their mother. Daily, I went to the hospital and applied the teachings given by our beloved leader that infections should be denounced and also that the temporal and unreal never can touch the eternal and real. I sang to her Mrs. Eddy's hymns, especially hymn number 160. The second day, I told my husband to say something to her, since they deeply love each other as brother and sister. And she opened her eyes. Also, I loudly spoke some truths of the science to her, knowing that God's being is never lost in unconsciousness. At home, I stayed close to the chapter of prayer in Science and Health. The following Monday, she was moved to intermediate care because she showed noticeable improvements. The doctors had been doing tests to find the cause of the coma, but could find nothing. Her entire body was healthy. This is a clear example of the statement in Science and Health which says, There is no cause outside of erring mortal material sense which is not power able to make you sick or sinful. I have understood from this experience the truth of God and man, that love restores everything to its spiritual original, into the expression of truth. The next Saturday, we were greeted by her with singing and praises of love. She was well. My nieces will return to the United States, leaving their mother healed and safe. The doctors are saying that it was a miracle. What do you think? The following day, the doctors were repeating that it was a miracle. This is evidence that the power of God is present. Tell me if this healing wouldn't cause us all to leave our all on the altar of truth as did Abraham? I just have a few things to read tonight. Uh, the first, uh, these are all from our church bulletin board website, First New Jersey. The March 7th Bible study was excellent learning about how God brought Peter and Cornelius together, thus sending the apostles forward, teaching Jew and Gentile alike, made for a wonderful discussion. Thank you to Fairley for the questions and to all who participated. And then there were a couple thanking uh, 
Thanks for the roundtable discussion on March 8th. Can't put into words how grateful I am for it. Thank you. And then another New Jersey. I'm grateful for Peter and Faith and always look forward to their singing every Sunday. The Child of the King was so beautifully done. They are working now on a DVD which should be available around the beginning of April. All the songs that Peter wrote. It will be wonderful and we will let you know when it is ready for purchase. And then just a couple of letters, one from Pennsylvania. Thank you all. What a blessing to be part of Plainfield. Another, dear fellow members, thank you so much for all the good that this church is providing for the world. One latest addition are the hymns, including the words in text on YouTube. How great to share this with others so that all may have the joy of singing along. In close, please find my monthly contribution. I would just like to say tonight how grateful I am to the beautiful readings tonight. Uh, wonderful, wonderful about miracles, and we would hear about the miracles and the testimonies that were given. I love this story, and it's not read often that Elizabeth read about Rhoda telling everybody that Peter had escaped. He was there, and here Peter was banging on the door, but no one believed he had, it had really happened. That dear little servant girl knew. Um, anyway, these are precious stories, uh, beautiful readings from Science and Health and miscellaneous writings to take into our heart, uh, to let it change us and soften us, make, a, make us better workers for God. I'm certainly grateful for the beautiful testimonies tonight. Our church has taken on a life of its own. This truth is going deep into everyone's hearts. You're using it, and that's very evident. And for that, I thank God. Thank you.